Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design That. I thought I'd give you a little update on what I'm up to. I'm working in steel today. I don't usually work in steel because my CNC can only handle aluminium. But I need to cut some T-slot nuts here for my screen print table upgrade. So I've got the drill press and I'm just going to be drilling some holes and putting a M8 thread in them. So there we go, that was my first time drilling steel. Tried to do it on the CNC before and it failed miserably. You obviously saw the drill press. Uh, I picked that up from eBay. Um, I might do a full video on that, but all I've done is I've just got a file just taken off the edges uh, just to make them a little bit less sharp. I think I've saved myself a bit of money here to buy the actual T-slot nuts from the company that, that I bought this T-slot from. It worked out like, I think, nearly one pound per nut which is ridiculous really i bought that entire uh steel bar that you saw i think it cost me like six pound and i got i think i got about 30 chopped up from it which is definitely some nice savings it's, it's such a simple thing um you know, i was just looking at it on the website and just thinking why on earth do i not try and make some of these myself now that i've got the, got the drill press i mean Without a drill press, I think it'd be really hard to, to hand drill this. I've tried to hand drill steel before with just my cordless drill. It never really works too well, but yeah, this just come out nice. So we're all done with the cassette now. I've just been taking some kind of press shots for it. I'm really happy with how this has come out. Uh, we had a few headaches along the way, but it looks really nice. The foil comes out so nice on this coated paper. And the embossed binary, that was actually really easy. Um, didn't have too many issues with that at all. The cassette is all done. I'm just kind of waiting for the cassettes to come now. And then we will be putting them up for sale. You can see that I'm uh, kind of in the process of building this screen printing table. I've kind of stumbled onto an issue and that with all of the frame we'll put together, you can see this is all done now. Um, can I lift it up? Yeah, just about. So you can see that that's how it works, basically. It weighs a lot. The original idea was to put some weights here. So it'd be kind of like, you know, it's like a counterweight to it. The problem is though, is that this thing weighs so much, um, I'm gonna need probably a good 40, 50, kilograms uh to, to be a counterweight probably even more uh yesterday i stuck all together i think it was 25 kilograms on the back and that was nowhere near enough to to lift it up and hold it up so weights i think are going to be out of the question for this yeah these brackets they're, they're pretty heavy duty but there's only four screws holding this into this plywood and yeah i'm not too sure it's going to hold it that well so what we're going to do is i'm going to go with some gas struts that i'm going to fit along here and then that will obviously uh, be used to raise and lower it it kind of works out better because it means i can actually chop off this end bit because this is where the weights were going to go but now i don't need any weights i don't have to have anything sticking out which is annoying because i always walk into these corners and it just kind of reduces the footprint of this table. It's already pretty big. You know, this is like 1600 wide. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big table. So that's a little bit annoying. It kind of means that this table is delayed yet again. And now I've got to try and figure out what gas struts I need. I've got to buy them and then I've got to build some sort of fixings so I can attach it to the table and also to the, uh, to the aluminium frame here. What I'm gonna to do today is I am going to use this screen printing frame. Even though it's really heavy to lift up, I can still lift it up and down. Um, and I've just gotta do some test prints today. So we are moving on to the next project.
the cassettes are done so it means that we are moving on to the vinyl so we've got the vinyl artwork here I've got the film positive printed this is going to be the uh, fluorescent orange layer and this is the layer that I want to test because this is probably the most important layer because this is going to really make it pop on some uh, white paper now, I've got an order as well but yeah I've got white paper to test so that's what we're going to be doing today process that I go through. I've shown it a few times but it's always just nice to show the process in case you uh, haven't seen it before. We've got a little bit of a uh, issue here with one of these circles. It rubbed out because I had a little bit of uh, spot of emulsion so this is not going to be good enough for the uh, for the final artwork but uh, we can do test prints with this. The film positive that I actually printed with the, the printer it is a little bit pixelated and I knew this and I thought it might give it just a little bit of an interesting texture because I don't want something so clean but it really does look quite pixelated now it's actually um, on the emulsion so we're going to print it and we'll see how it looks I got a feeling that I might have to turn this into just a uh, into a vector so you can kind of see how this is going to work I've got these little toggle clamps here a little bit awkward but yeah you can see the design of these these, these are really simple to make um, I've just got a bit of aluminium angle just on the lip here just so it catches the screen and yeah you can just loosen these slide it in and there we go so these slide up and down just tighten them in, clamp it, and then the screen is good to go. I'm really happy with how this works. Um, and now, obviously, I can use the vertical position of the screen. Previously, I always had to have it in this way. So, if I've got a long design here across the screen, I'd have to print kind of like horizontally across that, and it would be just really annoying. This is much easier to obviously pull it. Uh, vertically across the screen. I think I'm I'm going to get a bit of a of a workout here. This is a bit heavy, <laughs> and then then a few prints is probably going to tire out my arm pretty quickly. But um, yeah, we can just we'll give it a go. So what we're going to do first of all is just to kind of get an idea of how this is going to look with fluorescent and black ink. I've gone ahead and printed the black layer on uh, the printer downstairs, just on inkjet. Yeah, black is is pretty easy to tell what it's going to look like. It's black fluorescent. You, I find that you really need to just print it. Um, you can just obviously, you know, on Photoshop you can set the color to orange. It's not going to look anywhere near uh, what fluorescent is actually going to look like. So I always find that, like the the spot colors, the special ones that I'm using in prints, I always have to actually physically print them. But yeah, this is this is why I do. This is my setup. I'm just going to kind of show you what I do today. Um, so I've just got this bit of paper attached. I'm precariously uh, having this lent up with this uh, tripod stand, which isn't the best, but you kind of get the idea. So now I can move the paper into position. And I just need to line up, if you see, I've got these registration points here and here. They need to lay, uh, line up with the registration points here and here. So 
this is what I do. You might have seen me in other videos doing it. And basically it's just making sure that the layers, if I print them, are going to line up. So this does take uh, a few minutes usually to get it right. It's really important that you get it as close as possible. Uh, once you start adding more and more layers, you know, if you start to get a little bit sloppy, things are going to quickly get out of alignment. So what you can do if you're working with like a really big sheet is you can attach kind of like multiple uh, little bits of paper at different angles just so you've got enough room to kind of work it around. And that's good enough for this test print it looks like. Everything is lined up nicely. So there we go. So now we've got the position correct with the screen. Put this back up. So now I can put my little tabs. These are my little registration tabs. Just a little bit of a plastic film, mylar. Just with some uh, double sided tape on it. And then I just secure it once more with some masking tape. And all you need is just a three point registration. So as long as you've got three points, then each bit of paper that you put down will be registered precisely. One thing that I really like about this table is that, as I mentioned, because I can shift over the screen over to one side, I've now got a lot more space. So I can actually put stuff on this table and I kind of get a better use out of it, you know. I, I built such a big table, it's like 1500 wide. With the screen just bang in the middle, especially when the screen is horizontal, like at the moment it's vertical, so it doesn't take up that much space of the of the table. There was really kind of like not enough space to put stuff either side. I couldn't really put any work on it, I couldn't put any paper on it. But yeah, this is much better. So I've uh, taped, down, taped down the sides here. As usual, uh, I don't have a squeegee that is the right size. So you can see that this one is much bigger than the actual uh, width of the print needed. But it should hopefully work. And I've taped up all the edges, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Anyway, uh, let's get printing now and let's see what this is gonna look like. So another thing as well that I just realized is that I can put the camera on the table. So now you can get a nice up close view when I print. So we're starting with the ink closest towards me because I'm going to flood by pushing it up the screen. So hopefully this uh, is my first time printing on this screen print table. So let's hope it doesn't fall apart. I'm just going to make sure it doesn't break or anything. But yeah, it looks all right. Okay. It should get less squeaky when I've got a little bit more ink across the screen here. So let's try printing it. I ain't got any vacuum on, but it should be okay. Well, the orange comes out really nice. That's kind of trippy, but that works really well. I like that. I don't like the fact that this is all pixelated. I'm gonna go with a clean look, I think. I think the smaller versions, they look a lot nicer. Um, yeah, this is just a little bit messy. A bit too messy for my liking. So I'm gonna to have to redo the screen, I'm gonna to have to clean it, I'm going to have to coat it, expose it, I'm going to have to do that all again to change it. This is kind of one of the headaches with screen printing. Um, you know, if, if you want to change something, you've got to do it all again. But I guess that, you know, when you, when it comes to printing and you can print in kind of like fluorescent colours, you know, you can print in like fluorescent orange and you see the results on paper, it always looks amazing and it always gives me that kind of excitement. So 
it makes the process worth it, I guess. So I'm gonna call that a success. Uh, I think the design works, and now it's just all about kind of tweaking it. And I think that the next screen that I make, I've got to clean this screen again. I think then we'll be uh, ready to start, you know, doing full production run for this vinyl. The thing I need to figure out next is how exactly I'm gonna cut this up, because obviously I've got to cut it and fold it myself. Um, I've got to glue it. So I kind of need to figure out how exactly I'm gonna do that, what process I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna cut it first, or if I'm gonna print it and then cut it. I'm not sure what's gonna be easier. But anyway, I'll keep you all updated. Um, that's it for today. I need to kind of get back on with my normal job. And hopefully you've enjoyed uh, following me along today doing this type of printing. Let me know if you enjoy this stuff. Let me know if you don't. It's always interesting to hear from you all. But that's it for today. I'll catch you all later.